In my last screencast, I showed you how to create a good test case for the Gilded Rose Carter that will allow me to do the refactoring. And if I mess up on the refactoring, the test will fail and tell me what I did wrong. So this is the target of the refactoring. This is a long method and it's quite tangled conditional logic that is looking at the name of the item and deciding how to um, update stuff. Now, the task I have is to add a new class of item, conjured items, and it would be really useful if all the logic to do with a particular type of item was grouped together in this method so that it would be obvious what to do when you're adding a new kind of item. That's often the, the way with refactorings, you're trying to make the code look so that the new feature is really, really easy to add. So before we add the new feature, we're going to refactor this. The first thing I'm going to do is to replace this with a local variable. That makes the code read a little bit better, I think. Then I'm going to pull out almost all the whole body of this if statement, I mean the whole body of this for loop, into its own method. So now this method is looking much more simple and actually I'm going to inline that again. So now this method is the target of my refactoring and as I mentioned before I want to extract all the logic to do with a particular type of item um, so it's all together and I'm going to use a refactoring here which I don't think has a name but I'm going to call it lift up conditional. Um, so the way I, the mechanics of this is first identify the conditional that I want to lift up. In this case I'm going to lift up all the code related to aged Brie. So I've just copied that line of code into the buffer. Now I'm going to highlight the entire body of this method. And I'm going to extract a method, which I'm going to call foo, because it's not going to last long enough to need a name. Um, and then I'm going to surround it with an if-else. If conditional is that thing I just copied into my buffer before. That's the thing I'm trying to lift up. Then I just need to duplicate this line and put it in both branches of the conditional. So that should be a completely valid refactoring of the code. And if I run this with the tests, you should see they're still passed. That was a valid refactoring. But now the, what I'm going to do actually is inline all invocations of this method and remove the method. I said the foo method wasn't going to last long. So now I've basically duplicated all of the code from that method into both branches of my new if statement, if else statement. And if I run the coverage with my tests now, I can clearly see that some of this code is dead. Some of this code is now unreachable. It's a, a redundant copy. So all this stuff that's, that's read Actually, I should be able to remove. And here it's kind of obvious because on line 18 here, um, it's it's never aged Brie because I've already had a, an if statement on the previous line to say that it must be aged Brie. So it makes total sense that this bit of code is dead. So I'm just going to remove that. And then you can uh, see that we're just simplifying this, this code a little bit. The other thing I can do here is replace this with false. This is always false. And then IntelliJ is, is saying, it's highlighted it in yellow, and it's saying, I can fix that for you. Yes. It should be able to then invert this if statement for me. Um, and if true, it can be simplified. So this is looking a little better. I'm just going to run the coverage again, because there's more dead code here, I'm sure. So line 21, this is always false because we've already established that it's called Aged Brie when we come here, and then IntelliJ will help me simplify that. Wow, we've killed some dead code. This one similarly, this is always true, and then IntelliJ will get rid of it for me. This one is always false, and then IntelliJ gets rid of it for me. Now at this point I'm just going to run the tests again to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Yep, everything's looking good. Here we've got another 
line here, which is always true. This is always a to brie, and now IntelliJ will simplify it for me. This one is always true. Hmm. Although this one refers to backstage passes. Oh yes, because we already have the opposite conditional there. So this one is always true. Yeah, okay, I'll replace that with true. Uh, I'm just going to run the test again just to make sure. Yeah, and then I can get rid of that. This one here, this is always true. And then we can get some simplification there. So let's run the test again. IntelliJ is prompting me here as well, so it can simplify that. Nice, okay. So now if I look through this do update quality method, I've got I've lifted up the logic to do with aged brie to this first part, and then after that there are no more references to aged brie. So that seemed to be successful. So I want to do the same thing now for the next class of item, backstage passes. So I'm going to again put that into my buffer so I can easily paste it in the middle in a minute. Then I'm taking the whole of the rest of this else clause here. This is dealing with all the items that aren't aged brie. And I'm going to extract a method, foo, that I'm going to get rid of it again in a moment. So who cares about the name? Surround it with my if else, paste in my conditional that I'm trying to lift up. I'm going to duplicate this into both halves of the if else statement and then inline it. So now I've duplicated all the code into both halves. I should have some dead code. The coverage tool will help me find it. So here, this is always false. And then you have to put the cursor in the right place for IntelliJ to help you, and then it will get rid of it for you. Here, this is always true. Hmm, I'm kind of a little bit surprised about that because we haven't done anything to lift up the sulfurous. So I might just leave that a minute and go on to some of the others. This looks easier. This one is always false. Seems logical. We're trying to lift up this one. So logical that it should be able to be simplified. And again here, this one is always true. And I can simplify that. Um, this one here is always true. So now I can simplify that. And let's run the coverage again and see what we've got. Ah, now I've just worked out why this isn't being covered. It's because we've already established that the name is backstage pass here. So this can be replaced with true. And simplified. That's better. So now I've got all the backstage pass logic here and nothing about the other kinds of items. So now I can do lift up conditional for this one. And this is the target. This is the piece of code which I make into the foo method. Surround by an if else. Paste in the conditional I'm trying to lift up. Duplicate this line in both halves. And inline. Run the coverage. And this is going to help me. This is always false. And then this is empty, so I can just delete it. I would have thought IntelliJ could work that out, but anyway, it didn't. Um, this one is always false. This one is always false. And now this this is all wrapping up completely empty if statements here. Ah, so there we have it. All the logic for sulfurous was actually empty here. But we should just uh, see what remains when we uh, take away all the sulfurous logic. This one is always true. This one is always true.
this one is always true. Okay. So this is looking much better. Now we've got the logic with Brie, the logic with backstage passes, the logic with Sulfuras, and then the logic with everything else. So I'm just going to convert this to an if else. Um, and I can do the same thing here. So now this is looking like a very well structured conditional and I should be able to convert this to a switch statement. Switching on the name of the item. So this code is looking much better than it was before. And if I want to add the logic for the conjured item, it's now kind of obvious where to put it. I need another case in my case statement, in my switch statement, for the conjured items. And that would solve the problem. I'm kind of tempted to do a little more refactoring because now I've got this switch statement based on the name of the item, I'm kind of quite tempted to um, actually continue the refactoring and create some subclasses on item. Because there's a very classic refactoring which is called replace conditional with polymorphism, which should make this code easier to handle and easier to add new classes of item without um, having to go into this method. Uh, this method currently doesn't obey the open-close principle from that point of view. We'd like to be able to add conjured items without modifying existing code. So let me show you that in the next screencast. <laughs>